Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries and technically some of the more unusual mysteries when it comes to the already mysterious dark matter. The bizarre phenomenon that we still don't understand and that even after decades still doesn't have a very good explanation. But the phenomenon we are pretty certain exists. Mostly because of the observations from various galaxies and a lot of different galactic clusters that can only be explained if there is something creating a lot of gravitational pull or possibly changing gravity in some way. And even after all of these years, one of the best explanations is that this has to be some kind of an invisible particle, a particle potentially representing 80% of all of the matter, with less than 20% of matter essentially being stuff we're made out of. But in this case it's only invisible because it does not seem to interact with light or other electromagnetic radiation. It doesn't absorb, it doesn't emit, or does not reflect light and potentially does not interact with anything except for through gravitational forces. Which by itself might sound strange, but is not strange because we know that some particles, such as for example neutrinos, also don't actually produce a lot of interactions with anything and are also kind of invisible. In case of neutrinos for example, they only seem to interact with stuff through gravity and through the weak force. But they don't interact with light and they can easily pass through physical matter. And so for the past several decades, a lot of really expensive experiments try to discover this bizarre particle, but as of 2025, nothing concrete has been found yet with only hints of dark matter from here and there. With some scientists now suggesting that maybe it's not a particle at all, or if it's a particle, it's extremely small in mass and potentially exists as a wave as opposed to an actual particle. And we've discussed one of these propositions before when talking about axions. But despite of this, there's also been quite a lot of bizarre discoveries and some of them still make no sense. As a matter of fact, in the last few years, there's been some discoveries that are extremely difficult to explain. For example, in one of the recent videos in the description, we've discussed the discovery of galaxies that potentially are made entirely out of dark matter. And though galaxies containing a lot of dark matter have been discovered before, one of the strangest discoveries in just the last few months was basically this bizarre dark galaxy not so far from the Milky Way. Literally a galaxy that's invisible in any light, but seems to contain a lot of dust and gas orbiting as if it's a galaxy. But the question is orbiting what? And the only explanation here was that this was some kind of a chunk of dark matter representing an incomplete galaxy. Likewise, on the opposite side of the spectrum, researchers also discovered galaxies with no dark matter. Quite a few have been found as well, and here is the most recent discovery known as FCC 224. This was captured by the Hubble telescope and seems to represent an ultra diffuse galaxy with stars moving super slow, suggesting this galaxy is completely devoid of dark matter as well. And though some of these galaxies have been explained previously, as a result of some kind of a collision where dark matter was essentially stripped from them, other astronomers tried to explain this using additional theories such as the now disproven modified gravity, also referred to as MOND. You can learn about why this idea has been disproven in one of the previous videos in the description. But FCC 224 is not part of any galactic cluster, which means that any collision here is extremely unlikely. Yet despite of this, it seems to be very similar to other galaxies containing no dark matter, especially when it comes to stars and composition. Here all of the stars are really old, metal poor, the galaxy contains almost no dust, and obviously the stars are moving very slow. It's also unusually small and relatively compact, which wouldn't make sense if this was a collision. And so instead this seems to confirm the existence of these ultra diffuse galaxies devoid of dark matter particles for one reason or another, with their existence essentially suggesting we might need to rework the standard model of physics, or at least the models involving galactic formation and galactic evolution. But here it's not just galaxies and not just galactic clusters. Even phenomena such as the Einstein rings or the gravitational lenses have now been discovered to be somewhat unusual. For example, this one discovered less than one year ago and actually found by the James Webb, so it's called JWST ER1G. If we subtract all of the visible mass, it seems to also contain a ridiculous amount of dark matter. Here the mass seems to be at least six times greater than it should be, suggesting that whatever this is, it seems to be also enriched in this mysterious dark matter. Or just to rephrase this, this gravitational lens is way more lensy than it should be. It should not be bending light this much, yet it does. 
And this has now been explained as some kind of a bizarre excess of dark matter that seems to exist inside of this object. And we even got unusual discoveries in regards to dark matter coming from our own galaxy. Here when it comes to the Milky Way, in the past the center of the galaxy was expected to contain quite a lot of dark matter as well. But here by observing the motion of stars using the Gaia telescope, researchers discovered that the stars closer to the galactic center don't seem to move as fast as expected. Implying that, for some reason, even the Milky Way doesn't seem to contain as much dark matter in the center, and something about our current models is once again incorrect. This was based on the measurement of over 33,000 stars, so here the observations were pretty accurate. And then we have studies based on gravitational waves. And here, based on at least one observation, researchers even suggest that maybe one of these collisions was not from black holes, but was from very unusual boson stars that also represent a type of a dark matter. And so here, one of the most mysterious events to date was potentially a boson star merger that could account for at least a part of known dark matter particles. Implying that maybe there are actually a lot of different dark matter particles and this phenomenon seems to have its own hidden world that we're still trying to understand. But one of the strangest recent mysteries actually started to come out based on observations of dwarf galaxies. And especially dwarf galaxies in a lot of different galactic clusters. Now, for example, one of the recent mysteries from the local group of galaxies is in regards to the Andromeda. Here, as we discussed in one of the previous videos, most of the satellites of the Andromeda were discovered to be positioned in a very strange way. They were basically clustered in such a way that it should technically be impossible. Most of them were facing the Milky Way galaxy, and only one of them was facing away. And here, even today, this doesn't make sense, but kind of connects to this new mystery discovered based on the observations from other galactic clusters. And here this is the observation based on what's known as clustering, which is usually used to understand how galaxies form and how they evolve, usually as a result of the interaction with dark matter. And here, based on the observations from large galaxies, we usually have certain expectations. We expect bigger galaxies, or those with much larger dark matter halos, to cluster much more strongly, which would confirm that dark matter mostly interacts through gravity, with obviously smaller galaxies clustering less and creating much more diffuse environments. But previously this was only done with larger galaxies, so we basically have a kind of a bias. And intriguingly, this is sometimes also referred to as halo assembly bias, or essentially how the dark matter seems to assemble inside various clusters. But the observations by Zi Wen Zheng and the team you see here revealed something somewhat different. And mostly because this time they focused on dwarf galaxies as opposed to large galaxies. And here the purpose was once again figuring out how these dark matter halos assemble while then comparing them to what happens in large galaxies. And so in this study by analyzing a sample of isolated dwarf galaxies in various locations in a nice case, scientists behind the study discovered something that made no sense. Here they found a fundamental contradiction to how we usually expect galaxies to cluster. In this study, isolated diffuse blue dwarf galaxies for some reason prefer to cluster extremely strongly, with the clustering effect actually being very similar to a typical massive galaxy in a massive group. Despite the fact that a lot of these galaxies were pretty small and potentially contained almost no mass. And here the clustering was much much stronger than what you would expect just based on the estimates of mass of the dark matter halo and the mass of the galaxy. And these diffuse dwarf galaxies were clustering much more than very similar compact dwarf galaxies that were producing something that was way more diffuse. And while the only explanation researchers have right now is that maybe this is also due to the age of the halo or the age when these galaxies formed. And so here a lot of these diffuse dwarf galaxies were also aligned with very old halos, while many of these compact dwarf galaxies seem to be inside halos that were much younger. And though this observation is very intriguing, it still doesn't explain why. Why do some of these diffuse dwarf galaxies seem to be inside old halos, and why are compact dwarf galaxies inside something that's younger? Because here this observation contradicts a lot of modern cosmological models with the only possible explanation being a type of a model in regards to dark matter that's sometimes referred to as self-interacting dark matter particle. And so in this model, dark matter is a particle, but it doesn't just interact through gravity, it also produces additional interactions, potentially through weak forces. And though in the standard model, low-mass diffuse galaxies should actually have weak clustering in this self-interacting dark matter model, 
a lot of older dwarf galaxies will actually cluster much more. And so in this model, dark matter particles can actually collide, with these collisions very likely affecting the structure of the halo and eventually resulting in less dense central regions, which is something that we observe inside these diffuse dwarf galaxies. And because in this model, the old halos will also cluster much more effectively, this might explain some of these observations. Explaining the link between diffuse galaxies and strong clustering. Whereas the young halos and the more compact galaxies produce much weaker effects, resulting in less clustering and galaxies that contain very strong cores. Which, if confirmed, would essentially suggest that dark matter particles seem to be way more complex than we assumed, and potentially do interact with each other in certain ways, and specifically that they actually interact with each other through some kind of a force we don't understand. But, in a nutshell, a lot of these separate studies once again confirm that dark matter, despite all of these studies and despite all of these explanations, is still one of the biggest mysteries in cosmology. We still have no idea what it is, how it works, if it's a particle or some kind of a force or some kind of a quirk and a formula. We just know that it seems to be there and seems to cause a lot of these super bizarre observations. Anything from strange gravitational lenses to potentially unusual collisions to strange clustered galaxies that just cannot be explained in any other way. But one day we'll probably have an explanation, and so make sure to subscribe because we're going to talk about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon that contains a lot of videos you might have not seen before, and videos without any ads, maybe join the channel membership that contains some other footage, or maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.